Hello, welcome everybody. We're going to start uh, introducing DEFCON Def 10 at New York City. Michael Soltais and Jimmy Kaplovitz um, are local team members and are going to explain what, what is all this about. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're, so next year DEFCON will be in New York City and uh, just giving you a intro of what it'll be like next year, answer a bunch of questions. Um, so first we'll talk about the local area, uh, then we'll talk about the venue we've chosen. Then, as I, I know a lot of you have questions about how to getting to the US, uh, and uh, we'll, answer, we'll answer those as best we can, and uh, then, then we'll take questions in the conclusion. So, um, local team, so far, uh, the more core people, there's several people helping out, are me, uh, Jimmy, I think we're fine with doing the digressions and then doing the useful stuff later, Kaplowitz. Um, Richard, also I'm allergic to fun, so it could possibly be painful if I went Dars, AKA Mr. Beige, who also did a lot for this conference as well. And Brian Gupta, who's do doing a contact for the, the local press and user groups and so forth. Um, Michael Schulteis lives in Indiana, not New York, but he's still helping out a lot. And so can many of the rest of the several hundred Debian developers in the US. Uh, we have more than any other single country, yes, even Germany, but certainly not a majority. Um, so this is a uh, open street map map of uh, New York City. Um, the red arrow is pointing to roughly where Columbia is, that island it's on is Manhattan. LaGuardia is the LGA, a little bit to its lower right. Uh, that's the nearest airport, but mostly domestic. Uh, near the bottom right of the screen is JFK, the major international airport. And a little further up on the screen, mostly near the bottom toward the left, is Newark Airport, the other international airport, also pretty major. Um, so the neighborhood it's in is Morningside Heights. There's a lot of schools there, a lot of students. Um, this is a listing of some Columbia, Barnard, Sc Manhattan School of Music, Union Theological Seminary, Jewish Theological Seminary, and Banks Street College um, are all in that neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, it caters to the rigors of student life. Um, there's a lot of things to do there that don't cost very much money, you know, places to eat, drink, listen to music, lots of parks around Central Park. Uh, Riverside Park, Morningside Park are three very nice parks in the area. You'll see pictures of those. Uh, St. John's Cathedral, one of the largest in the world, and and uh, one of the uh, former uh, U.S. president's tombs. Uh, and it's 15 minutes from Times Square, really close to the uh, Empire State Building, similar distance. Uh, you know, it's uh, easy to get around. Mass transit goes there. So here's a picture of one of the cafes on Broadway, right right near the venue. Um, here's more, there's lots of them. Um, typical r residential street in the area. Um, this is another one that leads to that large cathedral at the end of the street. Um, plenty of parks. This is one of the closest parks to the venue, Morningside Park. Here's Riverside Park right near the Hudson River facing New Jersey. Um, here's that, another picture of that park. There's lots of places to buy food including a huge uh, sort of relatively gourmet supermarket and farmers markets from the surrounding hundreds of miles. Uh, farmers come in and uh, bring fresh local produce and baked goods and so forth. Uh, the, the transportation is very good. Uh, the subway system never closes, not on New Year's Day, not at 4 a.m. on a weekday. It is always there. There are changes sometimes, but you can always get from point A to point B. And if you want to get to a little north of the city, a little east of the city, a little west of the city, there's a regional rail to get there. Um, the bus system also sort of works in tandem with the subway system. You can transfer between them and so forth. Uh, but a lot of people walk around to get places. It's very pleasant to walk through. There's The weather is decent. The, um, there's things to look at and places to get snacks. And about three quarters of New York City residents, unlike the vast majority of the rest of the US, do not own cars. 
a lot of the cars are tourists or taxis or commuters. Um, so as I said, there's two major international airports, uh, John F. Kennedy International in, uh, in Eastern Queens in New York City, Newark Liberty International with uh, very easy rail connections to, um, to New York City, and both of them have, as I said, rail and ground transportation, lots of sh various buses from a wide variety of companies and government agencies. And LaGuardia is mostly domestic. I'll mention an exception later. It's about a half an hour single municipal bus ride from, from the venue. It's very nice. And if you, go, if, you, if you find a cheaper flight to Boston or Philadelphia or various other um, cities in the eastern US, you can still get there. You, know, you have to do a longer commute, but it's still doable to arrive and, and depart. Um, shorter than some of the past commutes from airports to venues in DEPCOMF history. Um, so what can you do in New York? I think you already know this, um, but here's some specifics. Um, you, there's a company called Circle Line which gives you a cruise around Manhattan Island. You can see a lot of sights. You can uh, see Broadway show, theater, you know, very nice plays. Uh, you can go up to the 80-something floor of the Empire State Building and go to the observatory deck and look out over the whole city. You can go up, as of this past July 4th, you can even go up into the crown of the Statue of Liberty and you can uh, see it very close up. Uh, plan ahead for that one. Um, Ellis Island, where a lot of immigrants went through in the early part of the 20th century. You can take bus tours, walking tours. You can see museums ranging from the Museum of Modern Art to the Museum of Sex to the, to the Museum of Comic Books. The museum of the City of New York. Yeah, it, there is a real Museum of Sex. I'm not kidding. Um, you can visit Central Park or Prospect Park or any of the other huge number of parks or cemeteries. And there's some websites where you can get more information from the city government and from one of the local weekly magazines. Um, so for the day trip, certainly as it says at the bottom, there's all the normal tourist stuff, such as what I just mentioned. Uh, we can choose some parks to hike in, in, either in the city or nearby. There's a national park with a wildlife refuge, uh, again in eastern Queens. Um, which is a lot of bird watching goes on there. Um, there's a huge number of tours, boat rides, other things we can do. You know, we can go to a beach if we want. There's, there's so many options. Um, that'll be decided closer to it. But you are here for a conference, so like, don't get too distracted. However, it's also New York, so what we're doing this year in 2009 is having a siesta in the afternoon. Next year, we're thinking of, instead of having a siesta, we're having maybe a go see New York esta or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will hope to have some volunteers who can help you navigate, not get lost, and, and uh, maybe give suggestions of things to do. But it's also easy to get around, even if you get separated on the day trip, or if you want to go do something else, see a relative. You can get around yourself, the uh, subway, you know, lots of people will be happy to help you. The maps are free, so forth. And if you want to do a longer stay, um, we may see about ways to get lodging for more than just the um, DevConf duration, which of course wouldn't be sponsored, but it could be discounted if we do the right sort of booking. Um, so the venue itself, Columbia University in the city of New York, it's a major research university, uh, six oldest in the United States, going back to 1754, about 10 years older than my university, um, consistently ranked in the top 10 in a lot of rankings. Uh, and here's a library which doesn't contain books on campus. A um, lot of good architecture. It's right at sort of a standard university campus, a little small, but very nice, right in the middle of a city, which you wouldn't expect. Um, we, have some, we can't include the maps of Columbia. The licensing doesn't allow that, but, but they are viewable online and very nice. Um, I could probably even show you, but uh, the, there's a disability access map too for those in wheelchairs and who need other assistance. Um, the, the main entrance looks like this. Uh, you know, it sort of goes right from Broadway into the nice campus area. Um, here's a view of the sort of lower sort of street level part of the campus. Um, the main, the main lawn, you know, people playing frisbee, it looks like. Um, there's some residence halls and some lawns outside of those. Outside the mathematics building, a lot of greenery. 
so we'll be in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences as the main uh, uh, venue, hack lab, talk, uh, food space. Uh, there's several different sized lecture halls and cafeterias ranging from 30 person to 200 pe person. And if we need a larger capacity room, there's lots more on campus. Um, there's also other rooms, but th those have to be arranged later. Um, yeah, this is one of the other university classrooms. We ha we can book those pretty easily for a little while or for um, you know a few large keynotes, but those would be uh, booked in 2010, closer to the actual event. Um, it's a picture of our venue, the engineering and computer science area. The plaza outside of it, another picture. Um, this is from one of the atrium areas inside, looking out. Um, this is outside one of the larger auditoriums in that building and inside. S smaller room, lots of other spaces. All right, a lot of you have asked when the conference is going to happen. Uh, we don't know exactly. The reason we're waiting is because the Columbia Conference Housing Office can't give us a confirmed definite reservation until October of this year. So um, if we wanted to set the dates now, they can informally guarantee us that they would give us uh, enough space, but uh, we might not be in as few buildings as we possibly can be, or we might be more spread out or something like that. Um, so given that October is still plenty far in advance to make any bookings you might need, um, we're going to announce the dates in October, and it'll definitely be in the U.S. summer between mid-June and mid-August. Uh, networking is is a is a plus here. Uh, there's lots of connectivity, especially well to the internet at large and to Internet Two, which is a sort of nationwide network of large companies, research universities, government agencies, with like really fast connection amongst them. Uh, including to the MIT mirror. We also actually, there's already an official Columbia Debian mirror. Um, and we're in touch with a really high level person in their central IT department, CUIT. Um, I can put you in touch with the right people at CUIT to make sure your needs are met, uh, he said, and there's really no one higher than him who, who has jurisdiction over that sort of thing, so that's a really good thing. When I was last there, um, the campus wireless did not need any authentication. It did not need, it did not need any encryption. Um, I have no idea about a few dead spots maybe exist, but we can supplement them. Uh, if there's any filtered ports, I'm sure we can work something out as we have in the past. Um, and of course, there's Ethernet ports in the rooms, and, in, and, and including dorm rooms and wireless. All right, so the dorms, that's a US term for you, those of you in the UK. It's residence halls, but um, we, we we have a, a link on the website to the amenities that are provided uh, by the dorms for the conference housing guests um, and maps and links of the campus also online, our website. Um, and in the surrounding area, there's lots of hostels and hotels um, within easy walking distance, five to 15 minutes, um, and subway as well as available um, over 1,200 beds, we're not going to run out of space, although we may, we'll see, we may run out of sponsor space, but there, there's always inexpensive options. Um, so the two, two of the large buildings, the one, uh, hold on, I, I can point. Um, so this building around here is uh, one of the residence halls, this building around here is another. So you can see they're pretty sizable and can hold a lot of people. Um, this is a residence that's maybe one or two blocks away from the campus, not far. Um, so for food, we can do what we usually do and have group meals uh, in the cafeteria, which I think you'll see pictures of if you haven't yet. Um, and uh, that works fine. We are not forced to use Columbia's caterers. We, we can com choose competitively. Uh, there's also the option if we want to have sort of better quality food for the same price, uh, we can give sponsored people a um, special debit card that is provided by Columbia and only works either at Columbia or at uh, 
a variety of nearby restaurants that have an agreement with Columbia and cater to students. And for sponsored people, we could give them a fixed amount of money and say, here's your food budget for the, for the week. Have your choice of food from these many restaurants. Go in small groups, chat. So, so that's one option. And we also had the idea of maybe doing sign-up sheets for large group reservations at some sort of uh, slightly higher, you know, higher price range restaurants or, or whatever people want to sort of preserve a large group experience in the restaurant scenario. Um, we'd love input on that and the day trip and such things. Um, yeah, here's, here's, a, here's a picture of probably part of the cafeteria in, the, in our building. And uh, I think it sees 100 people we said earlier. Here's some examples of the food service facilities. Um, so other people we know, we're not just name dropping here. We've talked to all these people. They're all giving support and working with us. So Eben Moglin, in addition to being uh, FSF count, uh, former SFS, FSF general counsel and director of the Software Freedom Law Center, is a professor at Columbia Law School, and I'm sure he will attend. Um, we are working with a computer science professor who, until July 1st, was the uh, department chair. We're working with one of the people in the, at the director level in the school who's maybe even going to be able to spend some paid time working on our issues. And paid by, you know, for his job, I mean, not by us. And uh, we've attended a meeting of the Columbia student chapter of the ACM, the Association of Computing Machinery, and it looks like they are likely to be a source of volunteers among many other sources. So we don't think Columbia is going to fall through. If for some reason we're wrong, uh, while we were still deciding our exact venue, we in-depth investigated Hostling International, which is a hostel that has some function rooms as well, 600 beds. They're in the same neighborhood, so we wouldn't have to change that much. We have to be creative about a few things, but overall it would work. Um, now on to a bunch of slides with a lot of text that are based on stuff our lawyer sent us um, to give you information on the bo visa and border hassles. Um, so the U.S. absolutely depends on depends on and welcomes foreign visitors. We actually have a lot of tourism in our budget, in our economy, especially in New York City. I think in uh, 2007, there were like 46 million visitors to New York City, both domestic and foreign, over 8 million like foreign visitors, about as many people as live in New York City. Um, and you'll hear a lot of sort of anti-immigrant bashing in the, in the uh, political world in the US. Um, it's really not how things work on the ground. Uh, people are... Ha especially in places like New York, which are relatively cosmopolitan, you're very welcome to visit. Um, and given that you're coming as a tourist, the U.S. doesn't want you to overstay your visa. That's the main thing they're concerned about. Um, if you can convince the U.S. that you're going to leave when your visa, before your visa expires, they're happy to let you in. Um, we will do what we can to help. We don't have magic inside connections, but um, we'll provide a lot of instructions and support and answer questions. And we have volunteer attorneys at least one, we may expand the team, uh, available to provide individual legal assistance if necessary. Um, so most attendees of DebConf and most Debian developers should have no problem c getting in. Uh, we checked the numbers of attendees by country uh, for this conference, and out of about 200-ish attendees, maybe 33 would have needed a visa to come to the U.S. Um, so we're definitely going to do our best to help everyone come, but Either way, we'll be able to make the conference work. Uh, so from, I believe, 2007 to 2008, or I'm not sure exactly how the fiscal years work, but over a period of about a year recently, the U.S. granted over 35 million requests to come visit the U.S., or, and over, uh, over 17 and a half million were granted to the, um, to the various countries that don't need a visa to, to visit the U.S., this number probably does not include Canada, which is a large chunk as well. Um, so we'll provide an invitation letter such as we usually do, but this one's actually uh, written by our lawyer with some input from the rest of us and customized for each person. Um, we'll provide uh, an explanation of you know, what sort of visas you need, mainly a, a business slash tourist visa. This attending a conference counts as business. And we'll provide help uh, getting the application filled out if you need that sort of thing including for the visa waiver program. So if you're from Mexico, Bermuda, or Canada, 
Yes, Bermuda. Uh, there's special rules. Mexicans need a 10-year visa that many of them already have, and I've been told by Mexicans that it's actually pretty easy to get. Um, but it's for multiple entry. You can just come as much as you want. It fits, it's, fits in your, your wallet like a credit card instead of a passport. Uh, Bermudans don't need a visa. I think that's at least if they're coming from Bermuda. Um, and Canadian citizens don't need a visa either. Um, permanent residents are treated based on their permanent residents of Canada are treated based on their uh, citizenship country, not based on Canada. Um, so aside from Canada, there's 35 countries in the visa waiver program that makes them not need a visa for typical tourism stays. Uh, if you are a citizen, not a permanent resident, but a citizen of any of the 35 countries listed here, mostly in Europe, but also in other, in other continents, um, you don't need a visa to come. Uh, and uh, I have heard that Greece is likely to be added to this list uh, by September. Um, so there is a web form to fill out to get this, uh, just like there is for people from several countries traveling to Australia. The U.S. has it too now. Uh, it's a pretty simple form, pretty similar to the sort of thing that you'd fill out on the uh, plane when entering any country. Eventually you won't have to do that if you fill out the web form, but you still right now have to do both. Uh, this is valid for two years for as many trips as you want, so if you've done it recently enough within the past year, you don't need to do this again. And if you do it for DEVCOM 10, it's still valid for two years, not just for the conference trip. Um, if you can do this, apply now. Um, you don't need to know the exact dates. You don't need to know the exact flight number. It's okay if you move later. Um, you can update the info. Uh, it usually gives you an answer within minutes. If they need to think about it, you can get an answer within a few days. Um, and if for some reason it doesn't work out, it doesn't mean you can't come. And there's, that way there's plenty of time to apply for a visa. This is really not going to apply to many people. The vast majority of you will get approved very quickly and probably, I'm hoping, all of you. Um, do you need a visa? If you're not from one of the 35 countries or the US or Canada, uh, yes. If you are in one of those countries but the web form says no to you, then you can still apply for a visa, yes. Um, you have to go to one of your local US consulate or embassies and have an interview after making an appointment. And uh, you just have to convince them that you have some sort of residence abroad, uh, you know, with a lease or a, you know, a mortgage or just some place that you're living abroad that you actually plan to return to, that you're not like giving up, you're not going to stay beyond the visa, and we'll provide a letter that you can bring to the to the, uh, to the um, appointment so that they believe you about coming to the conference. Um, they're just looking for proof you're not. Um, you're not staying. So again, a real estate holding like a lease or a mortgage helps. Um, bank records, you know, like pay, pay stubs coming in from a job help. M maybe if you've started a job recently. But being a student is not as persuasive and having family there is not as persuasive because as I'm sure many of you know, you know, we all travel all over the world while being students or while having just been students or having family in a country. Some embassies allow you to sort of temporarily lend the money to prove your intentions, but I don't know. Um, if you need a visa, contact them to schedule an interview. Um, mostly the wait times are reasonable, but not all of them. Um, and uh, we'll give you an, a letter to take to your interview. We have updated visa at debconf.org. It no longer goes to Anto. Thank you for his work on debconf9, but now it goes to our lawyer and me currently um, for an invitation letter. So the wait times are available online. Uh, apparently you can speed things up if you contact the embassy consulate directly, but here's a few wait times. Apparently Baghdad, Iraq, has a wait time of one day. <laughs> this is news to me. Um, so there's a lot of other ones that are pretty quick. Um, some take, you know, two to four weeks, you know, not so horrible. That's then, uh, that's basically not true. I mean, uh, hold on, get a microphone. Can someone give him a microphone? All right. Um, in any case, uh, uh, there are some political exceptions. You know, Venezuela, uh, actually, even though it says Venezuela takes uh, 
over about 240 days to get an appointment. We actually had a Venezuelan who got an appointment the week after he inquired, so these are samples and it can be longer or quicker. Um, and if you're from Havana, Cuba, or from Cuba in general, I'm amazed that we actually offer visas to Cubans, but I'm sorry, it won't be in time for the conference. 795 days. Um, but um, overall, if you're not from one of the few countries where there's weird political stuff, uh, it, you, if you plan ahead, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, so book early. Usually it should be just a one appointment. If there's any sort of reconsideration necessary, um, just allow time for that, but it shouldn't really apply to many people. So this is our lawyer, Frank Bynum. Uh, he's assisting us with the visa and border stuff. He's in the National Lawyers Guild's National Immigration Project. He came to a DebConf NYC key signing. He uses uh, Debian and Ubuntu. He's a good guy. He will be in New York for the event. So look online first at our site and at other like, reputable government sites and things like that. And you can email that address, visa at debconf.org. Uh, given that I'm included in the mailing uh, the, the mail alias right now, don't send like legally privileged stuff, but d don't include too many details. Just say who you are, say that you need assistance with the, with, uh, the process, and Frank will contact you directly, confidentially, via encrypted open PGP encrypted email. I signed his key. Um, so pre-clearance. Uh, if you're sort of a little unsure about, like, about your rights in front of U.S. immigration or just a little nervous about the process. Th if it's convenient for you, this might make you a little more comfortable. Um, if you travel to the U.S. through most of the Canadian airports or a few in the Caribbean uh, or Shannon Airport in Ireland, and I think either now or very soon Dublin as well, um, U.S. officers do your immigration and customs while you're still in the foreign country and then you land at a domestic terminal, maybe even a domestic airport like LaGuardia, um, and then you can get your bags and walk out. There's no more immigration at that point. Um, so the nice thing about this is foreign law applies in general, like US law doesn't. Uh, so that might make you feel more comfortable if you're familiar with your foreign law. At the same time, so the immigration officials can't arrest you, but at the same time, you still have to satisfy the relevant entry requirements. That doesn't change any duties that apply for things you're bringing in still apply. And uh, they can still search and question you and deny you entry, but that's true for any immigration officials anywhere in the world. But you're, most, you're still in the foreign country until you actually travel on the plane. So that's reassuring to some if it's convenient for you. I wouldn't really worry about it either way, but it's up to you. These are the airports where you can do that. Um, you can't see the colors too much um, on the projector, but the upper two on the, on the left column are Ireland, the lower four on the right column are the Caribbean, and the others are all in Canada. Um, this, these slides are also going to be online, so you can look at it. They're in the subversion, too. Um, so regarding your passport, um, you do not need to have a passport with fingerprints. Uh, make sure that your passport won't expire until at least six months after the conference. This matters more or less uh, for different countries, different nationalities, but still do it. Um, you need to have machine-readable passports, but that doesn't mean the chip. Certain countries need a chip, such as the ones listed at the bottom. If, if they're coming in through the visa waiver program, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, the Republic of Korea, and the Slovak Republic. Um, but in general, you just, the machine-readable passport requirement is just the two lines with a sort of uh, monospace block print, which is... Um, at the bottom of most of our passport pages and has been for years. Um, so unless you're going through a pre-clearance airport, you, uh, you clear immigration and customs when you enter the US, not when you're done traveling. So if you fly into Atlanta, you clear it in Atlanta. If you fly into Los Angeles, you, f you clear it at Los Angeles. And then you can, then you can get your bags you know, and then g go in again and, uh, and connect to your other flights. So it's simplest to just fly straight to New York. If it works, there's a lot of direct flights. Um, it should go pretty smoothly because you either have your visa or you have your visa waiver authorization or you're Canadian or American, and, and it should be pretty smooth. We don't expect any problems at the border. If there are problems, though, we do have our lawyer ready 
in New York as of the conference time to help if there are any issues that we really don't expect. So start soon with regard to that. And here are the credits for uh, our pictures. A lot of them were taken by Mr. Beige. Good work for him. All right, so questions and see you there. I'm sorry, I didn't want to sound aggressive as I did when I interrupted. Uh, uh, what I meant by the, those times are not true. Well, those are the advertised times to 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 get a visa interview. It uh, depends a lot on too many factors. I know. I mean, uh, for many people, that getting it in the wrong time of year can take. Uh, well, uh, for Mexicans, can uh, can take uh, weeks. Yeah, uh, although it's usually one day. So well, uh, whatever the thing is, plan. I, I, if you if you are from a country that requires a visa, go apply for it as soon as possible. Yeah. Most probably you will be processed uh, soon, but but who wants to to gamble on it? Yeah, uh, those are sample times. Those are not guaranteed minimum or maximum or average times, but it, it can be quicker or slower. So I, Gunnar is right. Um, you can even do the web form for the visa waiver program soon. And actually, on that note, uh, if uh, Steve McIntyre is in the audience, uh, yep, uh, at some point, could someone give him the microphone? Because he wanted to, s he agreed to say a few words about his experience filling out the web form for a different trip to the US. Uh, so at some point, could someone give him a microphone to say about that? Where is he? That would work, yeah. If you raise your hand, it would be helpful, thanks. Um, yeah, just to confirm for Jimmy, um, filling in ESTA, ETSA, I can never remember which way around it is. ESTA, yeah. Yeah, the ESTA form t took me two minutes. I was, what, uh, to, I'll be honest, I didn't even know about it in advance. A friend warned me that I should do it. It was well under the three days, and in fact, I got a confirmation back in minutes that, yeah, not a problem, um, I could travel to the US. Um, I'm told that you should go through and make sure you update things like your flight details and um, your um, hotel address, that kind of thing for each trip. Um, I've already gone in and done that for a subsequent trip. Yeah, easy. It's Yeah, the updating things is recommended, but uh, just like the 72-day advance period is recommended, but it's actually not as important, but yes, it's, it's, it's do it if you can, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I, sp um, I, I, I was, this was right at the beginning of when the program came in, so yeah. I was asked again at the airport to fill in the uh, green I-94W form as well, um, and the person on the desk at um, immigration, in fact, waved me through and said, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the people at immigration are not out to stop you. They are not out to be rude to you, although they're sometimes not paid enough to be polite. But um, they're they're just real people too. And if you're nice to them and you do what they ask, uh, they'll generally be nice to you to the extent that they are ever nice. You know, you know what I'm saying. So just treat treat them as humans too. Yeah. I'm redirecting an IRC question from my from the IRC and. Uh, he said, how many attendees are you expecting? And if you expect to host all of them? Um, we are this was from Mr. Bates. OK. Um, we're expecting maybe about uh, 400 to 600, uh, we're hoping. Um, I mean, it, there's no reason for it to be smaller than Edinburgh, because there's a lot of pent up demand in the US. You know, A lot of US people don't get to Europe or South America very easily. And uh, and uh, you know it hasn't happened there, and, and th there's a huge number of people who use Debian who are involved in Debian. And uh, as for hosting them, yeah, we can host several hundred in the in the uh, dorms. Some will want to use external lodging or will be local. Yeah, I think we can manage that. <laughs> if 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 capacities go way way high, we'll you know we'll we'll see about. Uh, how we want to sort of allocate our sponsored resources, but I think I think it shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, I seriously suggest 
that if you are expecting that uh, much interest, uh, limiting the amount of people uh, by setting a maximum number should be achieved because this is mostly a social thing yeah. to get to know people and uh, I would not be so interested in attending something with 500 people as something this size. We are totally fine with setting a maximum on either total attendance or sponsored lodging or sponsored food. It's uh, definitely something we've thought about. It's just something we could discuss. Uh, totally, it's an option. Any other questions? No? Oh, there's one? No? Where? No. Okay. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you will come next year. Uh, enjoy the. Uh, oh, yes. Um, we've given out a bunch of these promotional cards. Uh, we encourage you to uh, pick one up and uh, show it to people and get them excited. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you all. Next year in New York, enjoy the rest of the conference this year. Okay, Mr. Bish. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, in IRC, uh, Mr. Bish, do funny question. I don't know. The question was. Oh, I s <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What will you do to prevent people from uh, using DevConf to get a free New York vacation with only minor Debian work? Uh, I don't know. How, how you prevent that? Same as every other year. Uh, if, we're, uh, if they're coming for DevCamp, they need to give a sponsored, uh, uh, they, they need to give a work plan. If they're coming for anything else, um, they need to pay for their own travel unless we sponsor them with the usual methods of deserving people, you know. It's nothing different than any other year. All right. Any more questions? Then uh, uh, next talk will oh one more. So, in terms of the dates, you you suggest sometime between mid June, mid August. Uh, it'll definitely be in that range. Uh, from what I've heard, the engineering school would likely find it easiest to accommodate us in in uh, late June or July, but the housing is also a consideration. And thank you for reminding me. Um, I will pull up the website. Um, and we actually already have debconf10.debconf.org with lots of information. It has a practical information page. And most of the other pages, there's our logo. Uh, there's a nice uh, background. Thank you for Wilder and Daniel Silverstone for helping make the background. Um, and uh, under practical information, you can see the temperatures um, for June, July, and August. Average low, average high. The average lows in Celsius range from 17 to 20 degrees. The average highs in Celsius range from 26 to 29 degrees. Any, what, did you have a specific question about with it? Yeah. yeah. Can I be cheeky and try and push for as early as possible so it fits my vacation plans? <laughs> so you don't have any more questions. We are finished with this talk and next talk will be about hardware design with Debian. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming.